You want to come? You want to be the new anchor at the TV station? Hi, how you doing? I'm Charles Vance. Hi, how you doing? I'm Charles Vance. Hey, how you doing? I'm Charles Vance. I'm Greg Lindmark. Nice to meet you. Hey, how you doing? I'm Charles Vance. Charles, welcome to Rockford. Hey, how you doing? I'm Charles Vance. Hey, how you doing? I'm Charles Vance. Hey, Charles, good to see you. What are you doing in my basement? Good evening, I'm Charles Vance. And I'm Nicole Kilmer. A federal judge says former Governor Robert Gordon... Meet Charles Vance. Weeknight starting at 6 and 10. Good evening, I'm Charles Vance. One woman is dead tonight and five others were hospitalized after two school bus accidents. Apparently the train was carrying ethanol. Several of those cars on fire. Now, Katie, uh, I know that fire was pretty intense a little earlier tonight. Is that fire still burning? A new report shows one out of every ten Illinois mortgage owners are at least one payment behind. I got a hit on this. When you were in town this weekend, there was a little bit of controversy about your description of Mark Farmore's body. In fact, Winnebago coroner uh, Sue Fiducia said, I'm quoting here, Jackson is not a medical examiner, so it would make it difficult for him to make those kind of assumptions. I just wanted to get your response to that statement, sir. You know how to be a medical examiner is three, three hole, bullet holes in someone's back. And wasn't that a great parade we just saw? Amazing. Just a good time. Yeah, And it's getting dark behind us now. You know what that means? Fireworks time. Not far away. Congressman Don Manzullo wants your help finding a way to put Americans back to work. A candidate for Winnebago County Sheriff responded to charges of sexual discrimination and harassment today. One juror in the Rob Bogoyevich corruption trial kept the former governor from facing conviction on some of the most controversial charges. We love it when people come in here with big checks. That's our favorite part of this uh, telethon and here. And this is a big check. This is one big check here in, in many, in more than one way. And she'll send you this wonderful bag. whole bag. That's a great <laughs> gift right there. Let's check the total. Let's see where Let's we are right it. now, folks. 60,000. Right. Woo! Almost 61,000. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, it seemed like the perfect time to look for that perfect love story. I think we found it. Winthrop and Mary Bronson have been together for more than 70 years and still look at each other like they did when they were first married. For that reason, the Bronsons are our Persons of the Week. The year was 1937. The Great Depression lingered on. FDR started his second term as president, and one o'clock jump by the Count Basie Orchestra was topping the charts. It was also the year 32-year-old Winthrop Bronson proposed to 29-year-old Mary Hicks. Now, nearly 73 years later, they're still going strong. Well, we're on a honeymoon all the time. <laughs> He's 105 and she's 102 years old, still holding hands and laughing like two kids in love. I tell her she doesn't like to do that. I said, the reason we're still together, I haven't found a girl I like better. And I don't like that. <laughs> He's a retired chemist, and she's a retired school teacher with a passion for painting portraits. If we hadn't had that terrible depression and I had to teach, I would have just studied portrait work. They've lived all over the Midwest, raising a daughter along the way. But what's great about Wynn and Mary is they got engaged on their third date and never looked back. What would you say the secret to a long marriage is? Or... Well, we love each other, and we show each other that we love each other. And we never do anything that wouldn't show our love. We've never had an, an argument. If I don't agree with him, I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and he must do the same because he never argues with me. <laughs> I spent the afternoon talking with them about life and love. They told me about their first date, their wedding, and how even now, after more than seven decades together, they can't stand to be apart. Well, well, gee... When I'm away, I, I'm, I want to get home anxiously just to see her. <laughs> the perfect example of happily ever after. So after all this time, you guys are still best friends pretty much. Absolutely. Oh, oh yes. That's In fact, we're sweethearts. A game of ball in the park. It's a typical day for Mark Anderson and Jude. The two almost seem like any other father and son. Oh, whoa. <laughs> But they're not. Mark is Jude's big brother. They met a little over two years ago through Big Brother's Big Sisters. I was getting a little bored with life in general, I guess. Um, I went into work one day, said something to one of the girls in the office. I said, uh, there's got to be more to life than this. Just going to work, going home, watching TV, whatever. So she said to me, says, well, why don't you become a big brother? So he made a call and was matched with Jude, and the rest, as he says, is history. 
He's got a great family too. I mean, the only only thing is, he doesn't have a father in the in the picture, and that's where I come in. It's just a matter of of getting together with him, doing stuff, maybe playing catch, maybe playing football. It's not just where we go or what we do, but it's really spending one on one with him, and and showing him how special he is, and that I like spending time with him. Jude didn't want to talk on the camera, but we did talk for a while about baseball and why it's better to be a Brewers fan than a Cubs fan. Your typical 10-year-old who can also swing a mean bat. Hey, hello. It's a relationship making both lives a little bit better than they were before. There is times where we're together, and I'll look over at him and I'll say, I love spending time with you, Jude. And he'll just respond back, I love spending time with you, too. And that's what it's all about. Good evening, I'm Charles Vance. Bad weather is making its way across the state line today, and a severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect for the area. For the very latest, let's head back over to Ty in the Weather Center. Ty? Thanks, Charles. Uh, high winds and heavy rain later on tonight. So. All that damage is a reminder of how serious these type of storms can be. And lightning can always be deadly. All right, well, thanks so much, Ty. Yep. And as Ty was just saying, a 10-year-old Whiteside County boy is in the hospital tonight after he was struck by lightning. Wars and police say it happened just after 2 o'clock on the playground at Southside Elementary. They say the bolt went through his shoulder and came out of his foot. He was unconscious. When crews arrived, paramedics took him to Morrison Hospital where they got his heart beating again. The boy was then airlifted to another hospital. His condition is not known at this time. In other news tonight, Rockford's former superintendent of schools will soon find himself out of a job in Florida. Dr. Dennis Thompson left Rockford for Collier County, Florida in 2007. Last night, the Collier County School Board voted to not extend his contract beyond 2011. School board members say he did a good job with finances and hiring experienced teachers, but that he lacked communication skills, even calling him intimidating. Rockford board members who worked with Thompson say it's interesting. I find it interesting in that I had the impression that he felt that there was a lack of board support for him here, and that's one of the reasons that he went down there, so it's interesting that it apparently has not worked out. And we will hear from more school board members tonight about Thompson's job. That's coming up at 10. Well, NIU welcome incoming students today with a rally to help them with their transition from high school to college professionals. And as WTVO Channel 17's Mark Stevens shows us, they're ready to meet that challenge. And students will be able to take part in a campus tour tonight. Well, the Rockford campus of the University of Illinois Chicago could be affected by an upcoming strike involving 3,000 union workers. SEIU Local 73 announced that starting Monday, service employees will strike at all chapters, including the Rockford campus. The strike is scheduled to last three days or until an agreement is reached. The union's main concern is the ability for civil service members to move up into academic positions. The good behavior was the focus today for students in Belvedere. The group Positive Behavior Intervention and Support aims to teach appropriate demeanor at schools. Today, they met at Washington Elementary in Belvedere, and administrators say that it's not only the students that need to learn these skills. We also communicate that to the parents at home so the parents can be using the same language. The program reaches out to every grade in school. Well, a Pecatonic Elementary classroom will get a makeover thanks to a national contest. The school finished in the top ten for Bounties Make a Clean Difference contest. That means they get $5,000. And if the school is chosen as one that needs the most revamping, Bounty will donate $25,000 towards a new art room. You can vote for Pecatonic at a win. Just visit our website, mystateline.com. Well, members of Rockford's Bally Fitness Club will soon be looking for another place to work out. The fitness club on East State Street in Rockford will close its doors for good on Friday, August 27th. A company spokesperson says the club's lease is coming to an end and they have not been able to work out a new agreement. Club members say they're disappointed. A company spokesperson says any member owed money by Bally's will receive a refund. Well, Burpee Museum scientists have unearthed more bones to one of their most popular dinosaurs. Homer, the Triceratops, is now 40% complete. Paleontologists just returned from excavation sites in Utah and Montana. They came back with 3,000 pounds of bones. Now, many of those are Homer's. Scientists say you can watch them put Homer's skeleton together. Well, if you want to see us working on Homer and all of our dinosaurs from Utah, you can come right here 
Uh, we have a nice new viewing lab here, and we're going to have the bones worked on right here so you can see what we're doing. Burpee hopes to open the Homer Viewing Lab up by October. The exhibit is expected to be complete by the summer of 2012. I'm sure it's going to be really neat. So coming up, we'll have an update on that egg recall where millions were infected with salmonella. That entice forecast next.